Hey Fizzle, welcome. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hello, we were waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I apologize. Um, I was trying to put together something to share um, with everybody. So, apologize for being late, but um, I guess we can get started. Um, I guess most of the faces here are familiar. Are you guys uh, hearing my voice okay? Or is there an echo? Yes, oh. you're good. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to today like talk a little bit about some of the different uh, things that we are working on um, under the hood at uh, Optify. Um, I think many of them, many of you, are, you guys are actually involved in those things, so um, you already know about them, but um, nothing organized. I didn't really have a chance to prepare a formal presentation, so it, it might be a little bit all over the place, raw, but um, kind of cover a few different topics, and then as usual, I'll try to keep it within like, you know, Hopefully within 15 minutes, 20 minutes, questions, uh, leave the rest for questions if there are any. So I'll get started uh, and share my screen. Are you guys able to see my screen? Hmm. Not yet. It's loading. Yeah. yeah. Now we I can, can see it. Yeah. Now we can see it. So uh, last week we talked about a, a community announcement. Um, unfortunately, we have not uh, been able to make that this week. We'll be making it hopefully next week. Um, basically, on um, our process for select the users and so forth um, and the reason we haven't done it is because internally we are having lots of discussions on how we want to build our community and uh, I guess one of the keys discussion we're having is the concept of time versus money right so we have we are going to have opti holders who will be investing their money um, and then we are hoping we're going to have the super users who invest their time but they may not be able to invest as much money. And, you know, and sometimes those who can invest a lot of money, whales, they don't have as much time. And, uh, you know, for Optify, I think, for a community, both are important. So what we have been discussing internally, like whatever the details of it, in the end is to try to balance those two things. So obviously Opti holders can stake, vote in governance that of users who may not have as much money to hold on to a lot of Opti necessarily, but they're contributing their time. And if the only mechanism is Opti, uh, you know, you have to put in a lot of time to be able to catch up to like a whale. Um, so there should be some other mechanism. And there's where, that's where we're thinking of a super uh, user type of program. We called, we haven't, I mean, I think we talk, called it the Opti 100 lab last time but me and what we're expecting from our super users so yeah that's still coming up um but i wanted to focus today more on sort of our roadmap uh so um as you guys know uh 2020 this year we are uh soon going to be launching our alpha and beta vaults and then mainnet main vault actually all of them are on mainnet but the main full launch and uh, the focus has been on um, on yield optimization how to give users uh, yield uh, you know automatically switch to the, the highest performing pools out there um, so let's see has David uh, David and Nima here uh, I'm not sure well we had a new member on the team join us to, uh, this week David um, so he's a data scientist and uh, uh, Nima is our other uh, engineer who's working on data um, so this is the kind of stuff, I guess, uh, they're working on, I'll share with you. Um, so we're basically looking at, you know, we're getting really into details of data. And this is, for example, the compound dipole, right? Um, 
There's a lot of noise here, but if you just focus in on this one on the left. Yes, and you look at the, the orange line, that's kind of like a, a averaged out number, the rolling mean every 24 hours. There's these spikes that occasionally happen in these markets, right? So we're trying to build our optimization engine so we can capture these spikes before they go away. So what happens is there's an imbalance, a big depositor, sorry, a big, big uh, lender deposits funds or a big borrower borrows a lot of money and the market goes out of whack. It's if offering, you know, it doubles the interest rate. This is back to a normal average rate, right? But these opportunities occur frequently. And we are trying to right now uh, figure out best ways where we can be, like how frequency should we, how frequently do we need to be rebalancing in order to be able to capture these opportunities. So that's the problem uh, David is working on right now. Um, similar situation with USDT. Um, so we're really getting into the data to understand how these interest rates move. Again, you see these jumps. These jumps and so we want to be in a position to to capture these i'm hoping that within a week we're going to have some back testing done so it's actually going to show that our existing strategies which are only a very small number of strategies um how they would outperform you know holding your funds let's say in one pool an ave or a compound or even a curve just holding uh, on the yield side um but i wanted to really talk about um we're actually working on a lot of stuff internally that many don't know about. Um, for example, we have a big plan for integrations and multi-chain. You've started seeing some of it, but um, I kind of want to share with you some of the internal documents uh, that we use for this. Right? So we actually have an internal um, planning uh, board in which we identify the different and um, as you guys know for us like we don't focus on strategies we focus on integrations adding a, an integration adds all its pools and every possible strategy involving those pools so um you know we keep a list of all these different uh protocols and uh as we identify which ones we want to add uh, we, put, we, we start putting them into our looking like. So these are some of the ones we already have um, on Ethereum. Um, the, the, the white has not been done. So we, um, Nickler actually helped us with the convex uh, uh, ad, ad, uh, adapt, uh, adapter, but we didn't build a subgraph for it. So our plan is to kind of have these done. Set of integrations is done. Then we start moving across chains. So Polygon, Avalanche, Phantom. Our idea is to work like in two dimensions in parallel. We keep building these adapters on any one chain. And as soon as we're done on that chain, we start going across on the different chains. So that's kind of how we manage it. Um, so we have obviously done some already. These are built already in terms of integrations. Your Nave compound cream curve. This was done a lot earlier on. Uh, maybe some of these we would not have done, um, but we did. But not a huge deal because we can add these pretty quickly. Um, there's some in progress. Uh, Convex was actually done and Beefy is done. Um, and that's thanks to Nickler. Lido is still kind of, sorry, Lido and Convex is done. Beefy is still under, under progress. And then, um, you'll be adding more. So we actually build bounties out of these. So these are, this is like a foreshadow of the bounties that are coming up. Same stuff I talked about. We already have uh, basically go to the, like we'll start Polygon. We're heavily going into Polygon because that's where we want to end up next. So you'll see a lot of adapters in the upcoming weeks yeah. for Polygon. So that's uh, sort of our plan on the, on the expansion side. Um, and then, I uh, kind of want to talk a bigger, a longer term picture, right? Um, 2021, uh, one, two of the big projects that we have been working on are DEX strategies and NFT vaults. So DEX strategies, basically, initially what our protocol does 
is we are investing in single asset pools like Compound, like Aave, um, where you cannot have impermanent loss or divergence loss. We do use Curve because Curve are, are stable coin to stable coin or BTC to BTC. So in Curve, you really should not be suffering impermanent loss or divergence loss. So we do use Curve, but we haven't really gone with Sushi and, and Uniswap and Balancer. In 2021, we... We will be revealing our own um, custom strategies uh, for 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 those, and that you guys probably saw. We we, we put out a bounty to collect a data set for um, Uniswap and SushiSwap, and um, the reason is to backtest our strategy. So we've actually um, an advisor and a good friend of mine uh, by the name of Sebastian Jay Mungal. He's actually joined us, and he is a very like well-known entity in financial mathematics. Um, he's right, written, written the book on algo trading, high frequency trading, and machine learning, and so forth. He has a very well cited in um, in uh, Google Scholar and stuff. So he's actually joined us as an advisor, and we're actually building uh, deck strategies, which I think uh, I don't want to say too much, but I think uh, will be you know blowing out anything else that exists in the marketplace today. So we've started doing some analysis. Sign, trying to figure out like what can predict what in these markets and uh, so far it's looking like the data is going to support like strong strategy like being able to run good strategies on DEXs so we'll be uh, as as we have more back tests and stuff available on our strategies we will be releasing those in the upcoming weeks and months so that's on the area of DEX strategies because that's a big one we think that it's almost impossible for a user uh, of today to kind of, you know, for example, go to uh, something like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you guys have been checking out Arbitrum, but it has really good uh, yields right now. Um, so if you were to go to Arbitrum, a user would see like, Some really good good leads. Uh, oops, that's a, that's probably a fake. Yep. And uh, a user has no way of understanding or knowing. By the way, we're very beefy and curve combination is looking like a short term strong one. That's what we're kind of focusing on. That if you saw, um, but for a user to basically know whether you know how good is this spell if how risky is it versus MIM-8, right? There's no tools available. We wanna, this is on Sushi, so we wanna make that for the user. So even though there's a high yield and even though farm, so so where harvest.finance and beefy stop is they make you pick which pool to be in. You're deciding between these two pools and this might look better, um, but this might be better because this is more risky, right? Um, the difference between us is we'll let you just invest ETH into this pool. Right? We'll actually convert ETH to spell, put it in. When it's getting dangerous, pull it out, put it in here. So that's the difference. Where beefy and harvest stop, we continue. So we just make it easy for the user. Because even with beefy, even though um, it's it's supposed to be easier, you still have to pick which of these is less risky. And and you just can't. I mean, it's not easy for anybody. <laughs> even for me, it's not easy. I have to like you know, uh, plot it out and stuff like that. So that's coming up in deck strategies. Um, and NFT vaults. So what I'm really excited about as well um, in our roadmap is looking at NFTs as an investment asset. Same reason as we always have. Um, users today, they're seeing this huge amount of wealth being created in NFTs, um, you know, but it's not possible for them to access it. Why? Um, some of them are so too expensive, you know. Uh, once they're beyond several ETH, um, you, they're untouchable. All the blue chip projects become untouchable by any normal person. Uh, number two, how do you evaluate the price? How do you evaluate the risk? All of those things. What? These are rich data sets. So what we've started doing, thanks to Uwe here, is building a data set um, on these different NFT projects. Because the first thing you need in anything quantitative is data. So he's built a nice. Um, he's building a nice data set for us. Um, which is going to be updated. So we're going to have a very nice and pristine data set to work with. Um, 
It's actually the first time we're showing this, I guess. Um, and then for each project, actually, you can take a look. Uh, all the traits are here. We're not using the uh, necessarily the just OpenSea data. We're trying to get it directly. Um, we're looking at rarity scores, different uh, traits, and seeing which traits are you know uh, related to price. And what are the type of conclusions we can get from that? Um, for example, this one. And uh, one thing is we, we were studying MeBits and we discovered that the mean price for a MeBit that's bald. So zero means it's not bald. One means it's bald. So the mean price is five versus eight. And what I mean by mean price is it's in the 50th percentile. It's halfway. It's like average or 80th percentile. So having a me uh, a bald me bit is like, you know, usually the top 80% price in me bits. Having a pig is even better. It's almost at the 9%. There's very few pigs, right? And then the frequency of pigs is very small, but there's actually quite a lot of, you know, a lot more uh, bald me bits, evidently. So the conclusion, um, if you ever see a pig or a bald me bit at the 6th percentile price, you can buy it. And I know this is sort of, I'm being a little bit, you know, funny here, but um, like we believe data is the key to um, unlocking, it's the next level of investing in, in NFTs. This is land, a, a more, I guess, uh, you know, uh, typical asset. This is, this is a sandbox. So again, Uwe, thanks to Uwe, we, we're developing this uh, owner score. So this is a plot actually nobody has. This is land, but the red marks the uh, users who have the most land, the whales, the land whales, if you will. And so this is a smaller land whale. This is a bigger land whale. You can see he's bought a bunch of things here. And the question is, is it good to buy close or is it good to buy far from them? And stuff like that. Will they eventually want to be interested in buying this piece of land here? So is that a good thing to invest in? So this is all the stuff that's the prep work we're doing before we launch the actual NFT vaults. Um, but the vaults themselves are uh, interesting as well. Uh, how we're how we're designing them. Um, we actually have a interesting model for NFT vaults. Uh, the initial uh, NFT vaults are going to be able to buy and sell automatically on um, OpenSea, which is the number one exchange. Um, this is probably overcomplicated for this presentation, but yeah, we'll have an integration. We'll automatically be able to buy and sell on OpenSea um, in the future, just like our DeFi adapters. We're going to have NFT adapters, and these will connect to all the different exchanges. So you will not have to go uh, to different exchanges, you know, and, and buy something. From one point, you should be able to buy on any exchange. And NFT, look up the prices on any exchange. Um, in terms of the actual NFT vault management, um, I don't have a picture for you for that, but we, we have a, a structure where we're going to have a portfolio manager and the vault is going to have some constraints on it. Like it can maximum invest in, you know, it can maximum allocate maybe 5% to one type of asset, like 5% maximum to me bits or 5% to lazy lions or so forth. Or, or it can, it'll, it'll have a theme, land, collectibles, um, and so forth, right? And then uh, the portfolio manager will allocate a percent of the vault to different strategists. Strategist is going, to is going to recommend buying and selling of specific assets um, if the constraints are violated on a vault. So let's say we're getting too high on one project. We're going to have community auditors who are going to step in and say, hey, you guys are violating your uh, uh, constraints. You cannot go more than 5% on MeBits and you've gone over 5% in MeBits and there'll be a bounty for that. So it's going to be like a self-regulated system and um, we've kind of coming up with a system of checks and balances and the strategists are going to have access to our data. So they're going to have a nice screen like this and, uh, you know, possibly some other screen. So they're going to have exclusive access to this so they can go in crunch data, make recommendations for buys and sells. And then the portfolio manager and the strategist will have to either co-sign uh, with a multi-sig and, and purchase the assets. So, um, I think a very cool, and then, you know, if a strategist is not doing well, they can be replaced with another strategist. So we have a really cool, like, decentralized NFT vault management system coming down the road. So very excited about that. And, um, yeah, I think that's most of 
what I wanted to cover today. And uh, I've done it in 25 minutes. Um, so I'll leave the rest of the time for, for questions. We actually have a lot of people here today. Here to usual. So uh, first, Brandon is asking on the community events uh, text channel if we have a, a roadmap or a white paper. He's coming, he's brand new to this space, so he would like to understand more. Yeah, so unfortunately, the best we have right now is our docs, our um, docs.opti.fi. Um, but we will be publishing, we're actually making some adjustment to our website. So we will be publishing our uh, roadmap that I just kind of informally showed you um, on there. And and by the way, I like uh, a, a demand from from the community that protocol integration uh, spreadsheet that I shared. We can share that, and uh, maybe we can have feedback on that. So an easy way to do that is for me to just share this thing here. Um, I won't do it unless, you know, there's some, like, in interest. And if there is, then, you know, we could have people's comments on um, which protocols they'd like to see integrated next. I mean, we can just start doing it in a hacky way immediately. So, but yeah, right now, in terms of documents, it's just the uh, Optify, Opti. Sorry, docs.opti.fi. So I shared the docs Optify on the community events text if anybody wants to go deeper. And I think it's also important to mention we got a Medium uh, a medium account where we have some introductions to Optify published and where we publish everything we write. So there is some content in order to go deep down uh, in our protocol, in our Medium also. Oh, by the way, the um, one of the things that we are, we talked about our super users. So one of the ways we make sure that the people showing up to these calls, <laughs> are, many of you guys we know, um, are not just bots and stuff, is we are going to be uh, looking at contributions and questions and stuff like that. Um, that's really, there's there's just so much of this, um, like, uh, I don't know what's called, uh, community mining. I don't know what Thiago calls it, just people like, bots showing up to earn um, <laughs> airdrops and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen with us. Um, so many of you we already know and work with. Um, if you if we don't know you, we encourage you to, like, you know, say something that shows you're a human <laughs> so we know you're a human. Um, or you don't just have us on mute. <laughs> Do we have uh, any other question? Good question, but this is a very amazing tool. Uh, so much thought put into it. Uh, when is uh, a next phase that people can try it? Which which tool are you talking about? The our uh, optimization. Yeah. The yield. The yield vaults. Yeah. Um. Well, yield vaults. We're hoping in the next within the month of November, the alpha will be launched. And like I said, we it's not been decided. So we're actually going to open up the sign up sign up form um, for a few days. So we'll, we'll make an announcement on Medium. Uh, we're gonna. Put an announcement here in Discord on Twitter. So if you actually follow us, you'll know. And we'll open it up. So anybody who wants to sign up can sign up. After that, like, there's a lot of signups, but we want to make sure these are people who are actually going to be our super users, right? So we're really looking for, um, you know, like some kind of participation in the community. And those are the people who get those 100 will have had to have some type of participation with us. Um, and we'll be, we'll be publishing what that is. Like, you know, give us a feedback on our website. 
Give us feedback on our docs. We'll, we'll probably issue a little quiz saying, how does Optify do yield, A, B, C, D? And, and three of, two of them will be ridiculous, right? So we're going to only give that. Our objective is those 100 are not buying their way in just because they have the large... Like some projects, they try, to get, they try to find the biggest whales to fill up their vault. We're just not doing that. We just capped it at 1 million, the alpha. So we're going to be looking for, you know, folks like yourself who actually ask questions and, of course, compliment us. Um, so, yeah, I actually, for some reason, I can't tell who just spoke. Who was it? Uh, 41 uh, okay. is Daniel. Okay, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Hey. Nice to, nice to meet you. Um, have you been here before? Have you joined us before? No, we, we spoke about four months ago, uh, you and I. Uh, I, I was uh, um, very interested in this uh, early on, but I missed the previous announcement uh, for the for the first run there. So now I got okay. onto the communities and uh, I'm more tuned in. Okay, cool. So, anyways, if you are tuned in, you will have another opportunity. And if you are, you know, one of the 30 people, 40 people who now we know. Obviously, you know, <laughs> we will try to make sure you're in because we are looking for people to who actually super users, you know, like beyond just here for the airdrop and et cetera, et cetera. Right? And the only way we can screen that is actually like you speak up, you say something in the community, you know, you, you even in Discord, right? So uh, Thiago is taking notes, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we, we got one question from Chelito on the text chat also. He's asking if we ever considered to create something like an index, an index associated to optimal yield in a specific time for a kind of token. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. So, um, okay, so one thing we believe, we believe our die vault is going to be an optimized die, right? So we believe, like down the road, maybe in MetaMask, uh, you can, you should have, instead of just holding die, you can just hold opti die, right? Because it's just being switched to the best pool while you're doing nothing with it, right? But on the index side, um, the interesting thing is there's a lot of indexes on, on um, like DeFi projects. I think what's missing is a good index on uh, NFT. So we actually do have a plan for that. Um, the plan sort of is like... Um, our vault is an alpha vault. Like our vault is trying to pick and choose good, good bets, right? Like actually, what, what me bit is underpriced, buy it. So that's called an alpha. Alpha means it needs to beat something. It needs to beat beta, right? So in the in the stock market, beta is like your stock market. S and P five hundred is beta, and a hedge a hedge fund manager is evaluated on having um, alpha, right? So actually, what we're planning to do is have one vault that is NFT beta vault. What does it mean? It's going to take the top 20 projects and just hold their assets in it, right? How we do that is a question. Um, there's, a, there's a cool project called NFTX that has the floor of many assets, right? So we're actually, and their ERC, so we're going to actually, our, our vault is going to, there's going to be a vault that holds um, all these, the top NFT projects, the top 10 or 20, and when it switches, we just switch. We don't try to pick and choose. We just take the top 20, uh, maybe by market cap. And that's a beta vault. So if you don't think we can pick the best uh, bets in NFTs, just go with the beta vault, right? It's like buying the S&P 500. And gen then you can sit and relax. And you're saying, hey, as long as the market is going to, as long as NFTs will go up, my, my, you know, I'll go up with the market. And the other, there's a few of those, you will say, hey, we think Optify can actually beat the market. For that, there'll be the NFT alpha vault. And that's the vault that I was talking about where we use machine learning to try to say, hey, I'm not just trying to get any average asset here. I'm trying to get the above average assets. In other words, I'm trying to get the assets that are cheap, that are going to go, like we're picking and choosing. So for us to be able to say we beat the market, we have to have something that is the market. And I don't think there's actually any vault out there. So we're actually planning to have that. And that's part of what this data set, so what Uber's data set is doing is getting the top 100 projects. The way it works, any time a project is going to make the top 100 list, we start capturing data on it. Top 100 in 30 days. So if you just want like a, a sample of that without picking and choosing, that's going to be our NFT beta vault. Um, yeah, so to answer your question, we're going to have an index in NFT in NFTs. I think in the other stuff, there's lots of indexes. So um, we don't need to be doing that, I believe. 
And by the way, Index uh, Finance was hacked uh, last night, if you guys know, if you guys saw. Unrelatedly, but just FYI. So we have one more question from First Brain. He's asking if in order to use our product, uh, the user needs to hold Opti or OptiDi, as he mentioned it. So can you explain, Faisal? No, no. So to, to basically, to, uh, to use our product, you have to have DAI, USDC, USDT, ETH, or BTC, one of those five. Uh, initially, we're just going to have, for our alpha, we're either just going to have USDC or we're going to have USDC and ETH. Uh, we have to figure out. Um, but for us, it's, you know, making one vault or 20, it's about the same effort. Like, we just have to define it the same way. But um, you don't have to, you just have to have a DAI or an ETH or USDC. And that's the objective that... Um, you will earn interest, but you should also earn some opti. And then if you take that opti and you lock it up, and locking up can be for 30 days, for 90 days, for a year, you're going to multiply your returns, right? So those who, are, who, who basically lock in the opti for longer, they're going to have a higher, much higher uh, yield. So anybody has any more questions? For our team, for Facebook? For I'm TOS. TOS. I mean, TOS. 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 So, um, I believe Nickler picked up one of our bounties for Uniswap, so thank you very much. That's very helpful because our, our, our research project on DEX trading is right now depending on that data, so thank you for picking that up. Um, I believe Chilito said he'll pick up the sushi swap one, so thank you, Chilito. Um, I think if you if you get the hang of these subgraphs, there'll be a lot more coming down the road. So that's cool. We'll be glad to, you you're one of our early members, so we'll be glad if uh, you get to pick up some of those bounties, and then maybe that, there's a bunch of them as you saw coming down the road. And if you enjoy doing that stuff, um, I personally like the data stuff the best. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, let us know about that. Otherwise, any other questions, anybody? So, if we don't have any more questions, I think we can distribute our POAP. So.